Hello, my friends. It is the middle of the night here in Tokyo. Uh, we are here at Asakusa, and I wanted to show you guys Asakusa in the middle of the night. This isn't going to be edited whatsoever. It's just going to be a quick walk around of the town that I love to spend the majority of my time in. This place is normally hyper crowded during the daytime. Uh, crowds and crowds of people. It is very, very rare to see it this quiet. So please join me on this walk. I'm just going to flip the DJI over here. We're going to start over here at one of the entrances for Sensoji Temple. And probably one of the coolest uh, public urinals out here. Smoking is becoming uh, more and more frowned upon here. And uh, this is like one of the only smoking zones available in Asakusa. This little tiny spot here, you're not allowed to smoke on the street anymore at all in public. Um, unless you're in a designated smoking area and they're few and far between they're about 15 to 20 minutes apart this here uh, This little rock area is actually a public urinal and There's tons of vending machines here that I can actually pay with the card I might be able to just like tap my Suica card Here and just get a drink probably grab a water and a little bit or a Picari sweat For those of you who know you know, it is currently 4 a.m. Actually, 4.04. I've been out for going on almost an hour. I stopped by Mega Donkey today because I was picking up some video games. The new Mario and Luigi video game just popped out. There's the time, 4 a.m. here in Tokyo. I'm going to open up my bag show you guys what I got. We'll walk this way towards the temple. It's so quiet. This here is a little resting area by Sensoji. Nice little water fountain to cleanse your hands with over here. Very nice. So this place is extremely hard to take photos or video in unless you come very, very early or extremely late at night. So this here is a little fortune area where you can get your fortune told. Essentially, you shake this little box here and then you can pull your fortune here. And if you get a bad one, you can just tie it up and leave it here. Here's the main temple. There's nobody here. There's absolutely not a soul here. Get a little bit closer. Show you guys the temple. This area is so, so beautiful. There you go. Normally there's water coming out of the fountains here you to take a sip out and cleanse your mouth. And we'll walk on over to the side. During the daytime, there are some vendors here selling these good luck charms. You know, good health charm, healthy birth, education and learning, passing exams. They have one for everything. Traffic safety car charm. <laughs> Ward off evil. These are really, really neat. We have one person here. 
I'll walk you on over to the gardens over here. The gardens here are terrific. The water here actually has a bunch of koi fish. I hope I could probably pick it up with the DGI. Uh, we'll see. It's kind of chilly today. I'm really glad that I brought my sweater. Ooh. A little walking bridge area. Hopefully we can catch some koi fish. And I don't spook them. I'll try to use my flash on my phone. Maybe we can get a nice little shot of them by the water. Oh yeah, they're down there. They're moving around. I think they think I'm gonna feed them. Oh yeah, they think I'm gonna feed them. <laughs> I'm not gonna feed you guys. That's terrific. The wind is picking up quite a bit, so we're gonna keep moving on a little bit show you guys what I picked up at the Mega Donkey in a little bit. This is an extremely rare sight. Move on over here. So yeah, this is definitely our favorite place to stay because it's very, very calm very old, very charming area of Tokyo. And uh, the majority of the time, uh, during the daytime, you don't have to be here. <laughs> you can go to other spots. But at night, it's quite calm. Um, they do have a red light district, but it's much, much further away from where we stay, which is, we usually stay near the temple. And we try to avoid those places anyway. There's not really any bars or clubs in this general area. It's more so just like a foodie paradise. We've been posting a lot of videos about places to eat. And uh, yeah, check those out if you have a chance. Walk on through, they're taking care of the trash finally. It's one of my favorite shopping gates. It's completely closed at the moment. They have a melon pond store here on the left side. And this is one of the most famous spots for matcha. This is a famous melon pond store. And over here, there's usually a, a fishing spot that you can fish at. We can walk past down there actually. Seems like a good idea. This is a different route to where I was previously picking up video games. So there's a ton of these, what they call arcades out here, which is essentially just like a mall enclosed. So if it does rain, you can still shop in peace. And every single one of these shopping arcades, Asakusa is just filled with them. Every single street has a different shopping arcade filled with different shops and places to eat. All of them are charming like this. I don't know how long this video will be, but I'm just gonna kinda let it go. some of the vending machines. I wonder if this one has soup. Nope, no soup in this vending machine. We'll walk down this alley. One of the eating spots is actually here. Kind of turn a corner here to eat. I did a whole video on uh, places to eat in Asakusa. I'll pin it as the end video. It's one of my uh, favorite videos that we've made on the channel. One of the places that we had was uh, Giraffa here. Giraffa is one of the best curry ponds that you can possibly get out here. A 
couple hotels here. And the art on the shutters. Absolutely beautiful. There's a brand new Uniqlo here. That's a uh, huge. And upstairs there's a Saxe Yokocho, which is a like a wonderful like Blade Runner-esque eating area. And I'll walk you a bit further towards the Mega Donkey, because the Mega Donkey is actually where I picked up my video games. And I'll show you what video games I got. But next to it is the Asakusa Sumo Club. And that is uh, where I fought a sumo wrestler this week. My body is in a tremendous amount of pain from that video. But I'm really glad that I was able to uh, participate in a sumo match. And uh, I'm not going to spoil anything. But, uh, you know, I, I'll, 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 it's better left unsaid. I'm just not going to say anything about it. Wait until the video comes out. All right, there's a police box over here on the right. I'll show you guys the sumo club and the mega donkey. So here it is, Don Quixote. This place is sensory overload for shopping. It is just like five floors filled with character merchandise and all of it is absolutely wild. There's no filming permitted on the inside. I will have a video coming out on it shortly from the inside, but only when I leave. I'll show you the outside a little bit. And they got some eels. Some live gigantic eels. Some of the crane games. This is their mascot, it's Don Pan. He's supposed to be a penguin wearing a Christmas hat. Don't know why he's wearing a Christmas hat all year round, but he does, and he's terrific. Walk on by, get a quick shot of the inside. It's open 24 hours, and you can literally get anything and everything you need from Donkey 24 hours a day. Show you guys the sumo club. A lot of these places are closed. A lot of these places don't run for 24 hours out here in this side of town. But here it is, the Asakusa Sumo Club Sumo Show. If you have time, make a trip out here. It is super, super worth it. If you haven't seen any live sumo, this spot is a great spot, sorry. There is a adult um, entertainment new theater here. Those are just some of the balloons and gifts that they've received. Keep moving. And the whole reason I'm out here today was to pick up some video games. I'll show you guys the two video games I picked up here. Video games out in Canada are actually quite expensive, um, retailing for about 90 Canadian dollars for a new retail release, as opposed to out here, uh, the newest Mario and Luigi RPG uh, just came out, and it's about 50 bucks, and it's great. And I got a little coaster because it's day one. I also got a copy of the uh, Nintendo World Championships, uh, 30 bucks, 30 bucks. So 90 dollars total. I got two new games. For a bargain. Keep walking. Head back to the hotel. Cat's probably worried sick about me. Or probably passed out sleeping since it's 4 a.m. I have terrible, terrible jet lag still, so my uh my body is running on a 
strange time clock where I, I need to sleep for like four hours, wake up, and then I'm up for like eight hours. Here is a Asakusa theater. A lot of the shows are here. A lot of the comedy shows are here. And apparently they're not very good. <laughs> apparently uh, Japanese comedy theater is not very good. There is a Lost Sense convenience store here. The best egg salad sandwich. There's not too many Lawson's in this area. I think there's maybe two or three, and they're all on this side of town, which is unfortunate. It's about a 15 to 20 minute walk away from the hotel. Look at that. 600 yen for that. 580, 440 for those giant clams. It's about $4 Canadian. The value is there, folks. The value is there. This is the shopping mall rocks. There's two of them attached side by side and uh, both of them are very very good and it's actually where the uh, Kura Sushi is located and it is uh, one, one of my favorite sushi chains that's for sure. There's also this Salvatore pizza bar. Uh, we were roped into this spot because we were quite hungry one day for pizza and uh, I think it was one of the most expensive places that we've eaten here and uh, probably one of the worst places I, like for Japanese standards like everything's good even the bad stuff isn't really that bad but that place is, is like genuinely bad and expensive. I'm just gonna move out of the way of this truck. <laughs> this was one of the first restaurants Kat and I uh, decided to eat at because of the pricing here. It's unbelievably inexpensive for 500 yen, so about like $4.50 or $1.73, you can get yourself like a, a beer or a highball. And like you can eat a nice meal. 181 yen for gyoza, for four gyoza, or 228 for six. That's, that's very, very good pricing. This place is inexpensive and nice on a pinch. The food quality is okay, but like I said, even the like quote unquote bad food is still pretty good. Uh, Kura Sushi's here. And uh, it's crab season. So we're gonna have a video out about the crab season here. It is so, so good. There's a McDonald's over here on the right. I'll walk you guys over to the McDonald's. And there's this hand drip coffee. I think this place is called like Hoshino Coffee. And they're known for like their jiggly pancakes and uh, hand drip coffee. It's a little bit pricey for what it is. And like, I, I don't like it. I just don't like it. I don't see the hype. Uh, McDonald's is showing off their new collection of toys here, the Tom and Jerry figures. Very cool. And they have a new menu, which is um, like potato uh, and new chicken fingers. They also have a new Dalmatian pie that I've been meaning to try. But yeah, Hoshino Coffee, avoid. Avoid, avoid, avoid. Jiggly pancakes aren't worth the hype. Also, they're expensive. I'll walk you down here to another one of the shopping arcades. Uh, homelessness in Japan is still kind of thing. It's not very prominent, but you'll see like uh, these like box tents. I'm not gonna film them, but uh, they are here. This here is uh, Sui-san, which is a grill. Uh, you can get these cooked dishes here of like sashimi plates that are relatively affordable. Or you can get like things like scallop or like crab, oysters, little skewers, and you can grill it yourself in here. They actually have fish tanks at the front that they fill with live fish 
and when they sell out, they sell out. Suisan is a very, very popular restaurant and grill. I would highly recommend it when you're out here. So I'm not going to be a bother uh, to the folks staying in the tent, so I'm going to hang a left here and show you some of my two favorite arcades here. The Taito Game Station. This is just claw games aplenty. They have the Dragon Ball card game here. They have uh, air hockey and uh, these puri puri machines, which are these wonderful little photo taking booths that you can make yourself look nice, add like little kawaii animations. For Halloween, they have horror ones. Uh, if you are a man, you're not allowed inside of those machines unless you are accompanied by a girl. They will not let you in the machines. It is frowned upon. Next to the Taito station, there is a batting stadium and definitely one of the nicest facades I've seen. Look at that. The Rocks Dome. I love this place so much. It is located on the second floor. You go up there, there's a Puyo Puyo machine that dates back to I don't know when. And it is absolutely terrific. Um, there's a little Italian joint over here. Uh, the last time we were here, they didn't let us in. I don't think they're very kind to foreigners, which is fine. Um, I understand. A lot of these places um, won't let you in if you don't speak Japanese, uh, or at least like know a little bit of Japanese. And um, it's, it's not really like a race thing, it's just that they don't have like an English menu, and uh, they, they don't want to give you bad service. So instead of, you know, giving you bad service or like going through the, mm, you know, awkward phase of you trying to figure out what you want or what you're trying to convey, um, they, just, they just won't serve you at all, which is, which is fine. It is what it is. No sense of uh, being upset about it. Walk you through this area here. So here on the right is the uh, drinking alleys. It is closed at the moment. I think they close around midnight. And here are a lot of the old shopping district area. A lot of these places are grandfathered in. And it shows on what they sell. Uh, a lot of these places will sell like just knockoff goods or like really poor quality toys at crazy prices just because they've owned the shop for a billion years. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I don't do a lot of shopping in this area. It's uh, mainly tourism. I'll go I'll go out of my way to go to like Sunshine City or Shibuya. And this is Orange Street. One of my favorite streets here in Japan and the reasoning for that, why they call it Orange Street is because the street is orange. They have a little mascot here that I wanna show you. And if you watch any of my videos or any of my shorts, that over there is Japan Zone. And that's where you can find the patchy patchy clappy machine in the middle of the day. We'll go over here. And that's where we got the uh, orange floss. A little orange spot. Here is their mascot. The mascot of Orange Town. I love him. He is adorable. There's a giant furry version of him up the street and I will take you there. Also another reason why I love Orange Street so much is uh, it connects to one of the uh, shopping arcades that have the best taiyaki in all of Tokyo. I might be biased because it's the one that I've eaten the most from. But it's over here on the right. I don't know what the name of this is but it is perfect 350 yen is no joke it is a little pricey but it is delicious it is truly the best 
They sell Magikarp versions of Taiyaki in Akihabara, but tasteless, bland. Here you can get a premium custard one that is absolutely insane. Man, every day, every day we pick up one or two. My favorite one is the red bean one. Kat's favorite is the custard. And that custard is absolutely premium. Okay, I'm gonna stop here for a little drink. Do they accept IC card? They do. Nice. Look, a little tanuki. Oh, this place looks neat. Ooh, another little tanuki. Okay, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, relaxation, drink, chill out. Okay, I'm gonna try one of these. I'm gonna tap with my card. 190 yen. Oh, I have 4,000 left on my card. Try one of these chill out drinks. Relaxation gamma drinks. It is frowned upon to walk and eat and walk and drink here, so I'm actually just gonna drink it over here by the machine. Also, there's a lack of garbages everywhere, so I'm gonna actually have to carry this around. Most of these vending machines will have like a, a little area to put your can in. This one does not. Okay. Um, it kind of tastes like grape and melon, but like a chemically grape. Like not like a grape soda, more of like a medicinal grape. But I guess that's the like GABA or something. It's not terrible. It's not great. Let's keep moving. Dog department store. This is cute. Maybe I can pick something up for Jimmy. Probably not. He's not good. He's grounded. It's very, very much grounded. And for all of you Hello Kitty fans, there is the Sanrio gift gate over here on the left. One of the cutest, if not the cutest, building in all of Asakusa. There it is, the Sanrio gift gate. And uh, interesting fact, you can get a little uh, Sanrio passport and every single Sanrio uh, store that you visit in Tokyo, you get a little stamp. If you fill up that stamp book, you get a little badge. <laughs> and here is the mascot of Orange Street, Morane. He is perfect. He is perfect, and I love him. All right, let's keep walking. We're gonna go down one of these streets by Sanrio. So there's not really much of a point to come out here at night since not a lot is open except for the convenience stores. Um, unless you're really into sightseeing. Oh, nice. You get a neat little, uh, I guess, sticker set. If you buy Super Mario Jamboree at the 7-Eleven. This area is super, super beautiful. And I've actually had one of my favorite curry breads here in the Asakusa video that we posted. Chuo Dori Street. We're gonna head back to the temple because I think at this point in time, uh, it's gonna start to get crowded. 30 minutes in, I assume it's like 4.30 going on five. A lot of people will come out here to try to get that uh, early morning sunrise photo. 
of the uh, Sensoji Temple Lantern. And that's probably where we're going to end the video. 30 minutes in 4K is quite a video to upload. <laughs> Hopefully I can get this out today. Our Wi-Fi at our hotel isn't very good. They also seem to cap us when we use too much, which is crazy. I think we we're just updating Fortnite and the thing just, <laughs> just got halfway and was like, nope, 15 gigabytes is too much. Ooh, while we're here, actually, here, we're gonna walk up. So this is the shopping gate. The shopping gate is quite neat. There's tons of stores and vendors here. And this place is swamped with people. I'm saying crowds and crowds of people. It is very rare to see it have no one here. And uh, you also get like a rare shot of the shutters. Most people will never see the artwork on these. And all of them are designed super, super beautifully. I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, I'm gonna hang a left. I'm gonna hang a left. <gasps> These back alleys here are very, very nice as well. And there is a little area I wanted to show you. Hmm. A spot for me to put my can. There you go. Very nice. Yeah, that drink wasn't very good. I don't recommend it. Here it is. Bar not suspicious. So this place is open at random hours of the day. Not suspicious bar is a uh, pretty neat. It's it's kind of pricey for what it is, but it's it's nice. You go in. The staff are all super friendly. Most of them are uh, tour guides out here. In the Osaksa area, they, they'll give you a little piece of paper for you to put anywhere you want in the bar. So this place is just filled with these. Uh, Kat and I came here last year and our little post-it is somewhere in there. And uh, there you go, look at this. No charge, no tax. 800 for a shot, a bottle of beer is 1,000 yen, a highball is 1,200 yen, and uh, Japanese whiskey, 1,500 yen. So the prices are quite high for the area, but I mean like you, you, you pay for the area, right? Or else you'd just go buy the rocks, which is down there and pay 120 yen for a highball or like a dollar twenty. This this would be about twelve dollars. Postman on his way to the job. And this is where we're going to end the video. We have one person, only one person waiting to take that photo today, which is crazy. Off in the distance, you can see my favorite 7-Eleven and one of my favorite Japanese restaurants, the Denny's. Japanese Denny's hits on a whole different level. You can get set meals for extremely inexpensive. This lantern is huge and most of you that are researching Japan or wanting to visit will mostly come to see this lantern here. It's also a little police box here. They're guarded by two guards, Flyjin and Fujin. There it is, folks. Big old lantern. Kaminarimon Gate. 
is a rare glimpse of nighttime here and is an absolutely insane shot if you can get it. But if you come during the daytime or anytime um, till about 1 a.m., this place is just jam packed. That there is the Asexa building for tourism. You can buy prepaid SIM cards there if you need it. There's the 7 Eleven and the Denny's. No way to cross here. And you can't see it because it's nighttime, or you might be able to catch a glimpse. The Tokyo Sky Tree is off in the distance. Maybe I'll do a daytime version of this sometime, but uh, probably not. There's too many crowds. I'm gonna go pick up breakfast for me and Kat over at the 7-Eleven. And uh, end the video here. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. 36 minutes is an insane amount of time to, to spend with me on a walk and talk tour. I'll catch you guys on the next one. For food, travel, gaming and more, give us a subscribe. Going into the 7-Eleven.